All right, so I'm Kevin Packard. Um, came in yesterday from Washington just for this. So I'm happy to be here, and uh, hopefully you guys gain something out of this. Um, just kind of by way of information for me, this was my first layout. I was into trains back when I was a kid, and like most of us, probably stopped around in, somewhere in the teens because girls in school and everything else took precedence and didn't get back into it until gosh, probably 26, 27 or so. And so for the last about five, six years, I've been uh, getting back into it. Um, right now, I don't have a layout. I'm working more on just fixing the old stuff that I have. Um, how many of you have weathered before? Okay. How many of you are afraid of weathering? Okay. So how many of you will pick up a brand new locomotive out of the box and weather it? Okay, Somebody right. else's. Somebody else's, right? <laughs> Run it first. <laughs> See if it works. Make sure it works. There you go. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways to weather. I'm going to talk about one technique in particular today. And uh, after I kind of talk um, and go through slides and things like that, I want to do a demonstration. And for that part, I'm going to have everyone come up. We can call, stand around the table, and you guys feel free to ask any questions that you want me uh, to try to answer. If you want me to show you a particular technique or ask questions on how you would weather something in particular, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to take a stab at that. Um, so, for example, this is what we're trying to achieve um, if you're going for full-on prototype weather. Um, it's kind of hard to make it up on here, but how many of you weather with oils? Oils, airbrush, okay, pan pastels, acrylics. Okay, all right. So this was weathered, and it's right here, you guys can take a look at it later. This was weathered with 100% acrylics. And there was just a little bit of uh, powder done at the very end, and that's it. Everything else is all acrylics. What I'm gonna try to talk to you about today is how you can use acrylics to achieve your weathering goals easily. Okay? It's a very forgiving material, it's really not difficult to use as long as you understand how it works. So another example here, again, this is all acrylics. You look at the fuel tank there with all the streaks and everything like that, there's no oils on here at all. Okay? Another example here, this is all acrylics. The only part that is oils would be right down here. You can see this very, very subtle um, kind of dust kick up right along the, the lower sill. That was oils. Okay, everything else on there is all acrylic. All right, so where do you start? There's four basics that you need to do uh, when you're starting prototype weathering. First, you need to pick a prototype. I'm a big fan of looking at a picture. A lot of the models that I do are exact numbers. So I'll find an exact model and I'll renumber, uh, I'll find an exact prototype, excuse me, I'll renumber the model and then I'll weather it to match the prototype the best that I can. But a lot of times I won't change the number. I'll just you know, use some prototype pictures as a guide. But I will always use a picture. If you don't use a picture, you really don't know if what you're doing is accurate or not. I mean, you have a general idea, but, but you're just not positive. Um, a couple of places to look for prototype photos. My favorite is railroadpicturearchives.net. They have uh, by far the most uh, photos available. It's a little bit hard to sort through, though, and so I'll combine that a lot with railcarphotos.com. Uh, you can do locophotos.com as well. Um, any other sites out there that you guys are aware of? Fallen Flags is another one. Any other ones you guys have seen? Oh, there's a couple of Facebook groups out there. What's that? Real Goat. Real Goat? Yeah. Okay. What was that again? Chris Vanderheide's site for the stuff that also applies to the US. It's great.railfan.ca. Great.railfan.ca. Okay. There's a lot of good resources out there. Um, taking your own pictures is a great way. I mean, when you're out there rail fanning, if you're doing modern stuff, you can easily see what you're going for. But um, if you can, try to find the uh, prototype pictures, or at least something that's similar to what you're working on so that you have a guide. Then you know what you're actually going for. So that's step number one. Step number two, if you're in detail, detail. Okay, you want to detail before you weather, because when you're weathering, you're not going to want to get in there and mess with it afterwards. Okay? Clean and prep the model. Um, I will always wash my models beforehand, soap and water, let them dry. 
reason why is your hands have oils on them. And if you've ever seen a model that shows a big old fingerprint on it, because they didn't wash it first, okay? If you don't wash it and you have fingerprints all over it, your weathering's not going to stick. And you're going to end up with thumbprints and fingerprints, and it just it kind of ruins the look. So clean it. And uh, prep the model. Uh, and the last thing is dull coat. I always will spray with dull coat before I do anything else. Okay? Now there's two ways of doing dull coat. One is going to be from a rattle can, the other one is going to be from an airbrush. I use both, both of them have their positives and negatives. Rattle can is easy, it's fast. The problem that you're going to see with it is that it will tend to give you kind of an orange peel type finish. If you look really close at the model, you'll see it's not smooth. It's kind of bumpy and lumpy. For what we're doing, it's probably going to be just fine. Now, if you're taking really close up pictures, well, that orange peel finish can be kind of noticeable. But if you're running on a layout, doing free mode or operations or anything like that, a rattle can is going to be more than sufficient. You want to hold it a couple inches away, kind of go back and forth very, very lightly. Don't oversaturate the model. The uh, airbrush is going to be a lot smoother finish. Problems with that is you have to watch your airbrush. You got to mix everything up, spray it, clean everything afterwards. It's a lot more involved. And so when I'm doing something out of an airbrush, I'll usually do a whole bunch of models and get five or six ready for, uh, for the dull coat, and then I'll spray them all at the same time. So that way I'm not wasting my time with uh, having to clean and all that sort of stuff afterwards. With lacquer thinner, yeah. And so I'm just using the basic lacquer thinner that I buy at you know, Home Depot. Big old can for a couple of bucks, and it lasts for a while. Um, I mix it so that uh, Hard to, hard to describe it. I mix it so that uh, I'd probably say 75% dull coat to 25% thinner. If you do too much thinner, what you'll notice is that it'll frost. When you spray it on the model, you'll end up with kind of this frosty coating because the, uh, the lacquer is drying out the dull coat before it hits. Um, and uh, it'll, it kind of messes with the fade a little bit. So, a completely um, untouched model, straight from the box, after it's ready to roll. Nice model, okay, it's real shiny. This is what you get with dull coat, right? So this is from an airbrush. You can see the difference. I mean, you're, you're doling it down quite a bit right off the bat. All right, so this is a good change, but this is just the beginning. We're trying to get to something like that, okay? So dull coat first, then you get onto the actual weather. So then how do we change a painted model, fresh and clean, to something like this that has a very subtle fade, weathering, that sort of thing. Now you guys, some of you guys raised your hand for airbrush. How many of you have thinned using white paint? Or uh, excuse me, faded white paint. I've done it myself, okay. I'm gonna try to steer you away from that for one reason, and this is why. Can you see how frosty that is? Okay. If I were to pull the prototype photo of a BN car, a faded green, is not this. Okay, this is a lime green. It's not right. It's more of a yellowish type green that they go towards. So when you fade with white, you're always going to make the car look frosty. Now, a couple of the models I have here today, I did fade with white through an airbrush, but it was very, very light. I don't do that anymore. I haven't done it for years. The way that I do things now is what's called the color transition fade. This is a technique I learned from Gary Christensen, if you guys have heard of him. He's an excellent model. Uh, very, very well-known uh, weather uh, out of order. And the color transition fade is really simple. It's just these paints. Okay? You get these cheap acrylics, you mix it with water, and you apply it to the model. You get these things for a buck. You know, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, it doesn't matter. And you can get as many colors as you want. I mean, I've got on my desk a stack of 60 different colors that I'll use. I use maybe 8 to 10 normally, but then I'll expand out if I need them. Okay, so this is how it works. This is my modeling setup here, real simple. I have a plate, put the, uh, uh, put the paint on there. Cups over here, I've got them here as well, can I go through all that with you? One of the cups is soap and water so I can clean the brush, the other cup is just plain water, so I can thin the paint. Um, so a little bit of paint there. You thin it, and you can see how thin I'm making this. Okay. This is not thick. The key with acrylics is to make it very, very thin. Do multiple thin layers and it won't build up. If you just take your paintbrush, slap it in the paint, and then paint it all over the model, you're going to have a huge bottle of paint everywhere. It's going to look bad, it's going to obscure all the details, and you're going to have brush strokes all over the place. 
It's got to be really thin, okay? And we're talking skim milk here. This is basically water with just a little bit of paint, pigment in it, all right? Kind of hard to see here, but you can see how I'm just brushing it top to bottom, and you can see all the, the paint is pooling here, okay? It's going to pool all over the place. That's fine. Paint the whole side of the model, go back with the brush, and you just kind of very gently soak up any excess. You can take a hair dryer, you can take a heater, a space heater, you dry the side of the model, go back, do another coat. Okay? It usually takes three or four coats to kind of change that factory painted model into the color that you're going for. Right? How do you choose the color? Well, you choose the color based on what the final color is that you're trying to achieve. You mix up your paint to match that color, and you just paint it over. Okay? Um, let's do a, a case report here. So, BNSF 9624 is this model. This is how it started off as. Okay, I picked this up from a friend in a trade. It was in rough shape, factory painted, everything was already de lettered and everything like that. Okay? So, first thing was choose a prototype. Pick this up from railroad uh, prototype, uh, railroadpicturearchive.com. So, that's the look I was going for. Okay, you can see the green is kind of subtly faded, almost into almost a bluish hue. Okay? Uh, a lot of dust on the trucks, things like that. Um, so resting around some of the grills here, around the sill. After you find your prototype, detail it accordingly. I love detailing. Um, we have a lot of great companies out there that provide a lot of good products for detail. We've got you know, Dave Cannon here, or excuse me, Dave Hussey here from Cannon Company, who provides a lot of those as well. Uh, so we have a lot of support. Prep the ball. When I uh, when I weather, a lot of times I will coat my model first with future floor polish. Anybody ever used that before? Okay, a few. Now it's not known by future anymore, it's just Johnson & Johnson floor polish. Okay, it might have a little tag on the corner that says it's in the future. It's a great product to use, it's acrylic based. Um, on this particular model here, I did whatever decaling I was going to do, paint touch up, all that sort of stuff, and then I covered the whole thing with this future floor polish. The reason why is to protect the, uh, the decals and the paint underneath. Now if you go back to this picture here, the steps and everything that I added on here, we're looking at brass, white metal, all that sort of thing. I painted all that to the matching color, not with hobby paints. I painted it with acrylic, these right here. I mixed up black, green, some blue until I got the color I wanted and I painted it like that. Very cheap, very easy to do. I didn't want to have to spend another you know, five, six, seven bucks on a hobby paint. And where I'm at, there are no hobby stores. I have to order it in. It takes you know three to five days at least to get there. And I didn't have the patience for that. So I just made my own paint. Yes? Did you spray it? No, painted with a paintbrush. Again, light layers, okay? It takes a couple of layers to get it there, but it'll cover it up. You guys are welcome to come and inspect the model afterwards. And you'll see that with the acrylic paints, it still goes on really nicely. It's not overly thick, it's not obscuring details or anything like that, okay? Now, to protect the acrylic, because acrylic can scrape off somewhat easily if you're too aggressive when you're weathering or handling or anything like that, covered it with the Future. It gives it a nice, solid coat, okay? Yes? Can you use the Future before decaling too? You can, yes. You can use it before decaling because it gives you, again, a nice, smooth finish. And you can decal right over the top of it. Yes? Uh, what? Uh, do you thin it at all? No. No thinning at all. And so I just dump it out. Um, and I just take a normal paintbrush, usually uh, kind of a flat, wide one, similar to this, just paint it on, okay? It's self-leveling, there won't be brush strokes afterwards, okay? Don't do another coat until it's fully dry. If it's not all the way dry and you try to do another coat over the top of it, you are going to get brush strokes, okay? So just let it dry. It smells really good, by the way, too, so. So you are going to have your, like, clear coat to put your uh, decals on? Yes. I haven't sprayed clear coat in six years. So, I mean, I have some at home gloss coat. I've done it on the first couple of models and I haven't done it since. So, if I have to, I'll use the future. It's just easier. So, my thing, you gotta understand where I'm coming from. I do most of my weathering indoors. Okay, I've got my little table set up in my, in my hobby room and I'm doing everything in there. I've got a lot of little kids in the house. I've got three daughters. And I don't want to be using a bunch of stuff that's really not good for them to be breathing. Uh, and so I try to do all of my weathering indoors with stuff that's you know, not going to be harmful. That's why I'm using acrylics, water, 
uh, future, all that sort of stuff. Okay, if I have to use you know, the dual coat and that, that's out in the garage. I just like to avoid making too many trips out there because it's a hassle. You know, I don't want to be picking myself up and moving all the time. Okay, so model's prepped, ready to go. First step after that is dual coating. Again, really hard to pick up here. I apologize on the uh, projector, but it just very slightly fades it. Everything is now dull. The dull coat gives it a nice grip in order for the paint to stick. You have to dull coat if you're going to be doing this color transition. If you don't dull coat, it's not going to work. Okay, have to dull coat first. Now we get into the color transition phase. Again, it's hard to see up there, but light layers. Now on this model here, there's two different colors that I'm working with. You've got the cream, but then you've got the green also. You can't fade this with an airbrush very well. So what I did is I mixed up the green that I was going for, and with a brush, you very lightly draw along the green areas. Okay, vertical strokes always. If you do horizontal, then you're gonna have horizontal strokes show up in the final model. And you want vertical because that's the way that the rain runs when it weathers. Okay? So I did the whole model that way. I went back, I did the cream as well. Okay. There are, again, a lot of different colors. If you're weathering something that's white and you want to get it to kind of tone down a little bit, a great color to use is antique white. Okay? I think Americana has it. It's just got a slight yellow tint to it. But that's what I used on it. Again, just very small strokes, getting it into the white areas, and it's a very, very light application of paint. You go further. You can see it's starting to take shape just a little bit. You go from there to here. This is now starting to fade a little bit more. So you can see I'm starting to add some detail around there. Going further even still, again, hard to see here, but uh, that has changed now dramatically. You can see how light that is compared to the previous pictures, okay? The end, again, this is not oils here, this is all acrylics, okay? Um, small brush strokes. Can you see this kind of fading down here, that dust that's gathered on the pilot? Okay. Again, that's not oils, this is all acrylics. This is very easy to do, and I'll show you guys how to do that today. The nice thing about acrylics is that when you add acrylic to water that's already on the model, that paint will feather out. Okay. It spreads into where the water is at, and it leaves you a nice feathered edge. If you look at a prototype, the walkways are, uh, they're very, very faded from the sun, they're covered in, in, in dust and dirt and things like that. And these were originally black, I and mean, they were dark, but they lighten up a ton. This is easy to do with the acrylics. You take water, you put it right on the, uh, just take water on the brush paper all over the walkways, just soak it, and okay, you want water everywhere. Take your brush again, mix up some paint, get it really thin, dab that brush now with the paint into the water and out on the walkways. The water will soak it up, and wick it out. You can add a bunch of different colors. Let's do some black, do some grays, do some tans, do some browns. Okay, everything mixes together just like it would on a prototype, and it gives you a nice subtle finish. And then the finish model. Okay, you guys can take a look at this afterwards, but you'll see all these different areas where there's just subtle fading on the top, on the walkways, fuel tank, especially the trucks. It's all acrylics. It's just acrylic and water. It's all it is. Okay, light layers and some time. Okay? All right. Let's uh, we'll talk a little bit real first about oil paints and then we'll go into uh, a demo. So I do use oil paints, but only for specific reasons. So one of those is doing what's called a pen wash. When I'm doing locomotives, you have a lot of the panels here. You've got the, uh, the doors and things like that. Um, in order to get the grime and everything to go into those, Oils are fantastic because they tend to flow very, very easily. So I'll take some oils. In a case like this, I'll mix up black, raw umber, just to make a little bit of a dark wash. Thin it out a lot with water. I'm using water-based oils here. Again, way easier than having to mess with uh, turpentine and all that, okay? Very thin brush, and you just put it in these grooves. It'll soak right in, okay? And just follow the grooves, and it'll give you a nice uh, relief here. Okay, that's where all the grime and everything tends to gather. So that's what it looks like finished. Going from completely untouched here to fully done there. So you can see your panels, everything looks nice. The other thing I'll do with oils is called the filter. And this is something I learned from military models. 
So again, going back to the top right here, I want you to take a look. We've done the pin wash, but we haven't done anything else on top of that silver and gray. Uh, the filter with, you can only really do this with oils because oils will create a very, very light translucent thing. Um, but you mix it up with water, really, really thin again, dab a lot of it off on a paper towel, and then whatever is remaining on the brush, you just very gently and lightly just go over the model. And the very first layer will look like this, okay? Untouched, first layer. Can you see the subtle difference there? Okay, this is starting to go a little bit darker. Second layer, okay? Third layer, and then now the front's finished. So why do we do a filter? You want to do a filter when most everything else in the weathering is done because it ties it together. And I'll show you what I mean. So this was unfiltered. Okay, I've done all the acrylic weathering and everything else I was going to do. I'm basically done. Now, when you do the filter, this is what it looks like at the end. Okay. Can you see how it ties everything together? The entire locomotive, front to back, top to bottom, was filtered very, very lightly with some of this earth number and, uh, excuse me, rock number, just enough to kind of tie it all together, tone it down. You can do the same thing with freight cars when they're all done. Very, very light filter with raw number oils. It gives it a fantastic finish. It takes away any shine or sheen or anything like that and gives it a realistic look. Okay, so now having said all that, let's go into a live demo. Now, the, I think the best way to do this Honestly, I'm just going to move this table off to the side here. I want you guys all come gather around, and I'll show you a couple things. Feel free to ask me as many questions as you want, and I'll try to answer what I can. Okay. Um, this model here, factory Intermountain, straight out of the box. I haven't done anything to it besides the dull coat. All right, so it's ready to go. I've got my two cups of water here, plain water, soapy water to wash the brush with. Um, now, as far as getting our fade going. If you're working with a car that's got uh, kind of the mineral red, good color to start with is terracotta. You can mix that. Yeah. I don't. Now, I know that some people do. In fact, I was talking to Lee Nichols, and I think he's here somewhere, uh, yesterday, and he does put some soap in his water to make it wet water. It flows a little bit easier or alcohol, uh, and I've, nef I've never done it. I haven't felt a need for it. Not critical. I mean, you can definitely do it with, you can do it without. I mean, it's not the end of the world either way. What's these colors you're doing here? Just some red, um, raw umber here, and then some orange there, some terracotta. Most of it, what I'm gonna do here is just terracotta. So, get it really wet and it helps to see exactly how wet I'm talking about. Okay, so there's more water here than there is paint. Start from the top, and you're just gonna flow it down to the bottom. Okay, I got some dust on here, you see, from traveling. I'm gonna clean that off. So, if you travel, <laughs> clean it. Stop some dust on there, that's okay. This is just a, a demo. So I'm not being careful with this. It really doesn't matter. All right, you're just getting it everywhere that you can. All over the model. But I don't have anything to dry with, so I'm gonna set this off to the side and kind of let it dry. And then I'll come back and do a second layer. So you can see it pulls up, right? A lot of paint everywhere, okay? Take your brush, dab it off, and just get in there. Just touch it to the paint, it'll soak up the excess. Okay, very easy. This is a harder car to do this on because it's smooth. If you want to get started on this, pick up a box car that has ribs on it. It's very forgiving, very easy. Okay, I'm gonna set that off to the side. Okay, so this one here has had this done to it already. Okay, I've done, I think, three or four different layers on it. The other thing that I did is I took some of these chalks here, ground some up, and just kind of covered it a little bit there. It gave it a little bit nicer color, a little bit smoother finish. Okay. So what, now what do you what do? What did you apply the Bell's West? Just a like a big 
Big, big yeah. soft okay. brush. Right here. Yeah, big soft brush. Okay. You know, with chalks, if you're doing a big area, make it real soft. You just get in there, brush it around. Real simple. So this one now is ready to go to the next step. Now that you have it here, you can see I've covered up all of my lettering. Now this next part here, you can only do with factory painted cars and factory lettered cars. If you try to do what I'm going to do on a decal, you're going to ruin it. Okay, so don't do this if you're going to decal. If you're going to decal, you want a blank canvas, okay? Nothing on the car at all. Do your fade transition, your color transition fade, then decal afterwards, all right? The don't call won't seal the decal? No, or, not, not with this. So what you're going to do now, take a toothpick, get it wet, all right? It softens the edge of the toothpick, and it'll make it easier to clean things off. And you just get in there now, and you're just going to clean everything off of the lettering. This is the tedious part. It's not my favorite thing in the world to do, but if it keeps me from having the decal, I'm all for it. I, I wouldn't say that uh, decaling is my favorite thing in the world to do. Plus, again, when you're decaling, you gotta buy decals. Okay, seven bucks a sheet. If I can avoid it, I will. So you'll get in there, clean everything off. You can do the smaller lettering if your toothpick gets too dull and you can't get the smaller lettering, pull a new toothpick out, they're cheap. But you just get in there and just very gently scrape it, okay? And that's gonna get you back to nice white lettering. All right, so you can do the whole car, I'm not gonna put you through that, it's super boring to watch, okay? And it's super boring for me to, to do as well. <laughs> by the way, when I'm weathering, I'm gonna be listening to a book on tape, listening to music, something like that, okay? Um, and just making it so I can enjoy the time that I have to sit down. So we get on to this side here now. This side has been faded. It's been cleaned and it's been dull coated afterwards. Okay? Notice how the dull coat will tone down some of that color transition fade. Okay? That's normal. So it's gonna be to that. How much did it do compared to an untouched car? Okay? So out of the box, sorry guys, I wanna make sure everyone can see it here. Out of the box on the left, and then faded and cleaned on the right, okay? And the dull coat you used, was that furniture stuff you were talking about? No, dull coat is a, a product made by testers. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the future is, I did not do future on these, by the way, at all. I, did, I didn't need to. So let's actually go back to this one here. So this is the one that we did that first little fade on, just one layer, okay? You can see it's starting to, uh, to set up. Okay, it's got a nice semi-fade to it. Um, it's still a little wet. I can't do a second layer until it's fully dry. Okay, that's why you use a hair dryer or a space heater. Just put it next to it, move it across real fast, dry it off, you can go right again, okay? I don't dull coat my models at all in between my weather. I dull coat at the beginning and I dull coat at the end and that's it. So anything in the middle, you don't have to dull coat in between layers of weather. It's not necessary. If it's dry, you can move right on and you can go straight to the next step. It's not going to hurt anything. If it's wet and you go back over it, then you're gonna ruin it. Okay, so don't do it if it's wet. So your second wash layer will not, the water won't pick up the nope. acrylic that's already on there. Nope, if it's dry, it's dry it's if it's dry, then you can do it. Now, the trick is though, once you put it back on here, it's dry on this side, so I'll do it right there. Once you put it back on, you don't go over that same spot twice, okay? I put it on, I'm moving right to the next spot. Okay, if I hit this same area again that I just put that water on, then I'm gonna lift up my old weather. Okay, so you just go, start on one end, Work your way down, okay? All right, let's go back to our model here that we did kind of everything on. So we're past all the, the beginning steps. Now we can get into the meat of what we're trying to do. So if you're doing, let's see, pull up some colors here. This is uh, burnt umber. The elevation here is different, by the way. <laughs> so, everything is spraying out. So black, weather, man. <laughs> yeah, everything is just exploding out of these things. So I apologize. Some burnt umber. Okay. My main color that I'm gonna use when I'm weathering is raw umber, all right? I've got several bottles of this sitting on my workbench because I go through it like candy. Um, brush wise, I only use a handful of brushes. This one here, just kind of a standard brush, nothing special about it. 
but this is how I'm going to do some of the general weathering and I'll go back in with these really small thin brushes in order to do any final detailing, okay? So you look at the model right now, it's pretty one dimensional, it's got some, uh, got some fade on it and things like that, but nothing else. So we're going to add some grime. Again, very, very thin here. I'll take this right along this lower sill and get it right in there, okay? Now we have to let that sit and wait for a little bit. Let me do a little bit of gray here. When I need to lighten a color, I'm going to use gray, not white. If you look at these covered hoppers, and a lot of uh, a lot of times the roof line will be a little bit more faded than everything else. So again, real thin water. Get it up here. And you're just going to very gently kind of draw it down. And we'll give that some time to kind of set up there. And you can see how fast I'm going here. I'm not trying to be careful, not trying to be gentle or anything like that. This is just the initial layer. That's the nice thing about acrylics, you can do many, many layers. Okay. Now let me show you some of what I was talking about with the, uh, the walkways and the pilots and things like that. If you're trying to get that nice kind of dust kick up feathering uh, type action there. Let me just clean this out. Okay. So you're just going to take water. Get it all over the area that you're trying to work on here. Nice and wet, okay? You want water extending past where you're going to be working so that it doesn't leave a hard edge. If the water is where the paint is uh, and the paint reaches the edge of the water, it'll dry with a hard line, okay? So I got my paint, again, very thin, and I'm just going to touch it into the water. Can you see how that's, the water's grabbing it and uh, kind of filtering it out, okay? So just kind of work that along here. You can work with other colors. So I did a lot of gray on that. So let's do a little bit of uh, just straight up raw umber here. Kind of mix that in as well. Maybe a little heavy right here, right on that sill. So again, you can just get a dry brush, kind of touch that, suction up the excess, okay? All right, we'll give that a minute there as well. You can see on the top, that first layer that I did, it's starting to lighten up just slightly. Okay. Okay. So now that's just about ready for me to move on to the next layer. It's still a little bit wet, so I won't touch it yet. Um, but that's how that works. Uh, let me think. Trucks. So this model is about halfway done right now. Still in the process of doing it. This side here, I've done the color transition fade. I've cleaned off the letter. That's all I've done. This side here, I've done a little bit more than just that. I've gone around each of the ribs with that pin wash that I was talking about with the oils. Mix up the oils, get it really, really thin, and then you just kind of carefully on each side of the rib, go along it. Otherwise, look at the difference here. If you can look closely, and you can look afterwards too. Right where the ribs meet the edge of the car, it's kind of light colored. It stands out, it looks bad, okay? Get a pin wash going, take care of in between those ribs to make it look real nice. Um, Trucks, when I do trucks and wheels, I make it real simple again. I will use uh, Rust-Oleum Camo Brown, okay? Easiest thing to use, you can use Krylon as well. I like the color on Rust-Oleum better than Krylon, but either one is gonna get you what you need. I will keep my uh, wheels in the trucks, pull them off the car, stick them on a skewer, and then just spray the entire thing, okay? Afterwards, uh, as soon as it's done being sprayed, give it a minute or two to kind of get tacky and set up, Take a blade, an X-Acto knife, or whatever it is, and then you just go along the wheels, and you just gently just rub it along the wheels, and it'll scrape off of the treads without damaging the finish, okay? If you wait until it's fully set up, and you try to do it at that point, it's a lot more difficult. So do it after a minute or two. It takes two minutes to do it, okay? And I'm not having to pull my wheels out, put them in a wheel mask, and all that sort of stuff. If you do it in a wheel mask, you got to clean off the treads anyways, 
you know, I've, I've done wheel masks before and they don't work as well as I hoped. Okay. So you do or you don't remove your wheel sets? I don't. No, just leave them in there. And that way you don't have to protect the journals either. You, you just give them a spin as you're, as you're spraying mm -hmm. or something? I just, I spray the whole thing and then I'll just move the wheels just slightly to catch the area that was covered up and then spray it one more time. Okay. And I do the insides as well. Okay. If you don't do behind the wheels, sometimes you'll see it. Okay. As the train rolls by, you'll see this nice shiny thing underneath the car. It doesn't look right. Okay. Again, with the underframes, I haven't done this one yet. Um, have I done one here? <laughs> On the table there, I'll show you. That. But uh, when I do the underframes, Rust-Oleum, you know, I'm not going for a, a showroom finish on the bottom here. Nobody's going to see it. But I need it to be dirty. Tape off the sides, quick two sprays, and I'm done. Okay. Once you get the initial paint on the trucks and the wheels, that's the starting point. If you want to leave it there with that, that's a lot better than leaving it shiny. Okay. And you can roll with that, and it's fine. Um, my coal cars that I have out there, most of those I haven't done anything on the trucks besides just spraying with the rust oil. Everything else that you see out there, I've gone back in and I've touched them up. So to do that, you can again do the color transition fade here. If I want the side frame itself to be a little bit more dark than the rest of the wheel, sometimes they're black, sometimes the wheels um, aren't. Just mix up some black, put it on there. Okay. Again, let it dry. A lot of times the side frames right down here next to where the springs are are going to collect a lot of dust, mud, that sort of thing. Again, very simple to do. Get some water on it. And you're going to get one of your light colors here. Usually raw umber and gray mixed together. Feather it in. And you can be a little bit more liberal on this. Okay. And then we'll let that sit in page. Back to our car. You can see down here now how it started to gently feather in. Okay. So you can do this without having to use oils on anything. The thing that I don't like about oils is that they take forever to dry. You know, I don't have anything on this drying it right now, but that took, what, three minutes for it to dry and I can move right on. You get a hair dryer and you're ready to go in, in 10 seconds and you can just keep moving. Okay. Um, what questions do you guys have right now? Anything. What kind of oils do you use? These are the oils that I use right here, Artisan. But they're water-based. Right? Water-based. You can thin them if you want with, uh, with turpentine and things like that. It's fine. It's not going to hurt anything at all. And they'll flow a little bit better with, uh, with mineral spirits and turpentine. But again, when I do that, I have to go out in the garage. My garage is hot, it's dusty, and I don't want to do that. And so I just do it in my house okay, with water. Easy. Um, let me think here. Let me show you real fast, just a filter wash, just so you can see what that is. Now with oils, nice. Let me get the, the little galvanized bits showing you. I'll show you. Okay. Good one. That's, no, that's a good question, and I was hoping you guys would bring this up. Like, he hires it done, right? Okay. What's that? You hire it done. I, I hire it done. <laughs> Actually, I don't do commission work because. I've done it before, and man, I hate it. Um, okay, so again, very, very thin, all right? These are oils. There's not much on there. Dab most of it off, so there's hardly anything left on my brush here now. And you're just gonna take it, and just very carefully go over, okay? Light layers again. And once that dries, this area here will have just a very, very subtle grime covering it. You want to do it more? Do another layer, okay? And you can fade things down until you get to just the right point. For example, on the prototype that I'm going for, this area here is still too light on my model, okay? It's got to be a little bit darker. Mix that up. Just go right over the top, okay? A little bit more there. Okay. And you can see now how that's just slightly darker. When I'm done with this whole side of this model, I'm going to take this raw umber and do it to the, the entire side, one layer over the whole thing. Do the top, do the ends, everything. It's going to tie it all together. It's going to look unified. If you look at the models out there, I'll show you the ones that I've done it on the ones that I haven't. Okay, you can notice the difference. All right, so you asked about 
doing little galvanized looks here. You can also say the same for any of these other little chips of missing paint. I'll go back to, let's say, this model right here. Several different ways you can do this. Easiest way is just to use some paints here. Again, if you're doing any detail work, thin the paint, don't make it too thin. Okay? We're not trying to do a wash here. We're actually trying to get paint on the model. But if you do it too thick, then you're going to end up with a raised area. Okay? Because acrylic can be thick. Thin layers, all right? So let's say right on that top cord, I'll do it right along this top sill here. Thin brush, very, very fine tip. And you just let the brush very carefully do the work. Okay? It's not much. Now the other thing that you notice, when I paint fine detail, I'm not you know, out here like this. I'm always resting, and this comes from my dental training here, but I always rest my finger somewhere, either on the model, on my other hand, but you have to have a rest, otherwise you're gonna be bouncing all over the place. So let it rest, and then just very carefully let the paint do it. Okay. Do the same thing if you have, let's say, missing paint or rust chips or anything like that. Which, by the way, a lot of times rust on a freight car is not the bright rust color that we're looking at. It's dark. You can get down here and you can just very carefully add little chips here and there. Do it on the side of the car. Doesn't matter. Now, let me show you where I will use oils in a different case now. Say I've got some little rust chips side of the car, okay? Little kind of pinpoint things there. For rust, we're doing streaking. There is, there are two colors that you're gonna to wanna to use. The first one is gonna be burnt sienna, okay? This is gonna give you the orange type of uh, rust color. And then the darker inner area, burnt umber. You wanna go light to dark. So you're gonna start with your light color first. Get it wet. Start at one of your little rust pits here. And then you just very gently go straight down, okay? It's not heavy enough, you get it. Okay. The other way you can do it is you'll take some of your paint and you'll actually put a dot of paint right on that little spot there. Take a wide flat brush, you get down there, and you very gently pull it down. Okay. When that dries, you'll show a little bit of a streak. Now for the darker areas of rust, again, just use the burnt umber, draw it down very, very carefully. Okay. Now you notice how when I did that, I didn't use the middle of the brush. I use the very, very corner of the brush. I put it right on my dot and I draw it down. If I use the corner, I can see that I'm going straight. If I use the center, you can't, okay? So if you're trying to do lines, this car has ribs, for example, you can, you can get the, uh, the grime on the ribs very easily. Get a little bit of paint right on the corner of the brush. Put it right on the rib. Very gently bring it right down the rib. Straight every time. And you use a big wide brush like that instead of like a little tiny. It's like easier to go straight with a wide brush because it's resting on the model. It's not going to go back and forth. You, know? you use the entire rest of the brush to hold it there, and then just that corner is going to be paint, put the paint on. Okay. So another trick. Okay. Questions? I was trying to use a little how tiny, about, like how about zero fading brush. Black. Fading black. Use gray. So I'll use something like this, mm -hmm. slate gray, charcoal gray, um, but with that, it's very, very light, okay? It's gonna be a different type of wash than what I did on this, okay? This was really heavy. Got you. With fading black, you're gonna use that brush almost like a filter wash like you would with oils. Okay. Hardly any paint on it at all. Just let it go over. You'll see a dramatic difference as soon as it dries. I mean, it'll look immediately lighter. And you only need to do maybe one or two coats of that. So. You know, the, the tank cars that I did were done like that. You know, these were all stark black and then all faded with gray. Um, other questions? The roof, you did that with acrylics? Now this is oils. Okay, now this is the other part where oils are gonna shine. Oils can feather out very, very easily. 
So for this, what I did is I took a brush um, similar to this, how it's kind of frayed at the end, very, very soft. Take your oils, uh, start with your lightest color first. Again, I used uh, burnt sienna on that. Put some on it, dab most of it off. Okay, you want almost nothing on there. And then you very gently go through and you create your overall rust pattern. Then you do a little bit heavier layer the next time and tighten it up and tighten it up. And then at the very end, you're doing burnt umber right on the darkest spots. Key is light to dark and uh, light layers to heavy layers. Okay. So did you did you wet the whole roof first and then just let it flow where no. it flowed, or did you no, control so it more? When you're doing oils, you can't do that. So oils, this is all this was all dry. Okay, you're okay. basically dry brushing, stippling it on just like this. Okay. okay. So you were basically you're basically stippling. Yeah. Yeah. So oils are great for that kind of a rust. Okay. For dust and things like that, like I said, most of the time I'm going to use acrylics. When you look at this car here, all of that on the side again, that's all acrylics. That's how you get kind of that wavy effect. You get everything inside of there, take a Q-tip, get it wet, and then very gently just take some of that acrylic off. Okay. Several layers. This car was done with a filter wash at the end, uh, uh, raw umber over the entire car, maybe one or two very, very light layers. How about uh, galvanize on the roof? So two ways to do galvanized. There's another car over there. It's a hopper that has some paint chipping on it. Uh, that was with the hairspray technique. You spray the roof first with the color that you're going to do, then hairspray, then spray over the top with acrylic of the final color. Go back in with soap and water, scrape it off, okay, and it'll chip the paint and leave you with your underlying color. That's one way. The other way is by painting it on physically with gray paint. So there's not a right or wrong answer there. I personally tend to like the chipping. I, I think it looks better than doing otherwise. So other questions? Do you do any dry brushing to add highlights or anything like that? I don't dry brush to add highlights, no. Um, I got away from that because you don't see it on prototypes. You know, there's no like highlighted areas on it. It's, it. If it's highlighted, it's highlighted because of the actual weathering on it. Well, normally uh, the highlighting is done in a low light level right. area where you have to do like an artist does. Where you have right. And that's why they have done it in the past. Military models will, will do that a lot you know, to try to bring out some of these smaller details. Again, I don't, um, and um, most of my photography is done outdoors, and so it's going to show it in natural light. But even these things, I mean, you can put them on the layout here, and they'll still look. You can see all the detail on them. So, other questions? Anything else? Okay, that was kind of a quick and dirty. Sea line white box cover. Very good. Not quite. Glowing uh, antique white. That's anytime you do white cars, antique white is what you want. Okay. All right. Antique white and get going on. Well, thank you guys. Sorry for the quick overview. It was fast. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, very good. Appreciate it. No problem. Send the video at all.